In this flicker, we'll explore the ancient practice of dog sledding or mushing, highlighting lady mushers and women who have competed in and won one of the most grueling dog sled races in the world, the Yukon Quest. First up, we'll visit with longtime musher and West Dawsonite Gabby Skaga and her wonderful dogs. Good girl, honey. Maple. Bamboo. Scarlet. There we go, baby. Good girl. There we go. <laughs> Spoiling the kids. <laughs> So this was the sled uh, with the sled bag. This is where I used to go on multi-day trips. You'd need at least six, eight dogs. I'd go down or up river and I'd pack everything. And this, this is a big heavier sled for those kinds of trips. Yeah, yeah. I just bought this last year. It's handmade uh, by a guy uh, who's an artist and uh, it's really light. And so this is great now for the four young dogs for a smaller team. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and, uh, indeed, it's been fun. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's been That's all right. I don't mind. Maple. <laughs> You're oh, I don't stealing mind. my thunder. Um, <laughs> So this is a uh, this is more of a uh, the team's a bit smaller. So this you know, but this was the one I used to go traveling on. So that'll get you for uh, that'll get about me a week or so. Yeah, I used to go for five six days. Yeah, yeah. This is more of a day day sled. Day you know, sled just for a few hours and a day. Right, I ain't too um, familiar with that there uh, material. It's is it a plastic? <laughs> well, it's a canvas. I mean, you might have had a kind type of, a, of canvas. Kind of like, a, oh, canvas. I yeah, know like canvas. Tent, oh, right? certainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this here is at, uh, it's like a. Oh, yeah, no, that's. It's like a, a hard plastic. Modern. modern. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, yeah. you gotta. There's some of this modern stuff is pretty darn nice. I that's think. what makes this heavier. Yeah, yeah. How heavy that is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's heavier than and a then, lot of, of the course, ones this, I knew. This is the gang line that the dogs are attached, stretched out front yeah. normally. So. No. And the snow hook. I like that this one's made of good wood. It, uh, yeah, and that's caribou hide there. It's a bit of an artistic kind of thing. Right there's caribou yeah, hide. Yeah. No, this guy is now, amazing. He was a, a piece of art. I'm almost afraid to take it out. <laughs> yeah. Now, what would, would, you, oh, yeah. <laughs> would you not take her out for more than a few days? This one? Yeah. Um, I suppose you could, but you can't pack as much as you need. That's a bit bigger sled with the sled bag. You can pack more. You got to pack for your dogs. Sure, for you, certainly. You know? Yeah. Yep, um, yep, yep. So this is a little more lighter weight. You could, of course, but yeah. It's nice. It's nice. And then the kick sled, of course, small for the old guys. So. Oh, yeah. And then skis for skijuring. So I got all the levels <laughs> for all the dogs. <laughs> yep. Kick sledding employs the same techniques as dog sledding, but because of weight and design, only requires one or two dogs. Kick sled racing without dogs was a popular sport in Sweden from 1890 to 1910. Kick sledding with dogs is a popular pastime throughout Canada. Skijoring combines cross-country skiing and most often sled dog power, a Norwegian word meaning ski driving. The Sami people of the Nordic North used reindeer, others use horses, and some even employ vehiculars. So, uh, so now, did you use that uh, sled there for Quest when you used to run in, uh, in the Quest race there? No, I never did yeah, run the Quest race. Oh, it's, oh, your doggy did. But my you, doggy oh, did. Oh, your doggy yeah. did. Oh, okay. My right. doggy did more than I did. <laughs> no, but that's the one I would go 60 right. miles. I would travel and, and camp with that one. It's a 60 mile. Yeah, one. at least 60 miles. Yeah. So these days you help with the quest. I help with. The, I organize the Dawson area, the Dawson checkpoint. Tell us, tell us a little bit about Quest. What, what is Quest exactly? How long has it been around? If you... The Quest started in 19, uh, I believe, 83, 84, and uh, it's following all the old trading trails, all the trails people used to use to get back and forth. Yep. Uh, it used to be going Whitehorse to Fairbanks uh, alternately every year, 1,000 miles. The Yukon Quest International Dog Sled Race was born out of an April 1983 barroom discussion in Fairbanks between four Alaskans, two of them veteran mushers. The idea was to stage a 1,000 mile race along the same routes used by the Klondike Gold Rush era mail carriers 
like my old friend Percy DeWolf. The first quest took place in 1984 and has always been a bush experience, as Leroy Shank, one of the founders, put it, where self-reliance and survival is more important than speed. In 1999, Ali Zirkel won the Challenge of the North Award given to the musher who best exemplifies the spirit of the Yukon Quest. In 2000, Ali became the first woman to win the Yukon Quest with a time of 10 days, 22 hours, and 57 minutes. Um, this last year, it was only in Yukon, so it was about 450 miles, and Dawson was the finish. Normally, hey! <laughs> Normally, Dawson Tussling is the midway there. point. Yeah, <laughs> kids! <laughs> uh, so normally we're the midway point, but this year we were the finish line, so it was kind of different, kind of neat. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I've been doing it for about 24 years now, and um, you know the dogs are fantastic, the mushers, it's like a family, actually. Since its inception, the Yukon Quest has utilized Dawson City as an important halfway point on the 1,000-mile international race. It is the only checkpoint where mushers can receive assistance. The Joe Fellers Dawson City Award is presented to the first musher to reach Dawson City who also completes the race. In honor of Dawson's Gold Rush origins, the awardee receives two ounces of Klondike Placer Gold. How many teams are in there? Uh, this year, because it was a bit smaller, we only had six this year. I mean, post-COVID, oh, yeah. post people are coming back. Uh, but we used to have anywhere from 30 to 40 teams. 30 to 40 teams you yeah. have there. My yeah, quite goodness. a few, yeah. But six this year here. Six and this year as a finish line. And, uh, and the person that won? Who was uh, Michelle Phillips, who's run both the Iditarod and the Quest. Thousand a lady mile. won. Yeah, she won. Uh, the goodness. top three were women. Well, I like, I don't know, I like to see that. Uh, I yeah, know, you're a progressive man for oh, time travel. Oh, you know, I, I, yeah, yeah. I like that the, the, those, um, <laughs> those clothes, I call them, uh, I call them clothes, Closed minds. No, um, no, yours is wide open. You, I can tell. Gotta, you gotta, you gotta be open yeah, to yeah. There's, there's ladies. Boy, there were some tough ladies in my day, I'll and uh, <laughs> tough ladies today, and you being one of them here, uh, Miss Gabby. Well, that's there you for, go. that's for certain. Uh, <laughs> Called the toughest dog sled race in the world, the Yukon Quest mushers and their 14 dog teams climb four mountain passes, cross frozen rivers and battle extreme cold as they navigate through some of North America's most beautiful land in the Yukon and Alaska. And every year, many women mushers hold their own or do better than the men they are competing against in this epic race. Boy, can we go out for a ride sometime? Absolutely, at yeah. one point. Yeah, we'll, yeah uh, maybe when the weather's a little nicer. I'll it's take a nice. rain check. Take I'll a take rain a check. snow check today. A snow I'll, check. Snow check today. You don't then, want rain. No, snow is no, good. No, no. Yeah. Snow check. Ain't this just a beautiful sight? Yeah. And, uh, yeah.